And then, that's what, uh, what comes next, as point number 101, on page 21 here, the second volume, then Imam al-Barbahari, rahimahullah, he said, وَقَالَ بَعْضُ الْأُلَمَاءِ مِنْهُمُ الْإِمَامُ أَحْمَدُ بْنُ حَنْبَرُ الْجَهْمِيُّ كَافِرٌ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْقِبْلَةِ حَلَالُ الدَّمْ لَا يَرِثُ وَلَا يُورَثُ لأنه قال لا جماعة ولا جماعة ولا عيدين ولا صدقة وقالوا من لم يقل القرآن مخلوق فهو كافر He said and some of the scholars amongst them Ahmad Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal said the Jahmi is a disbeliever. He is not from the people of the Qibla. His blood can be lawfully shed. He does not inherit, nor is inheritance received from him. Since he says that there is no Jum'ah prayer, no congregational prayer, no Eid prayers, and no charity. And they said, whoever does not say that the Qur'an is something created, then he is a disbeliever. Sheikh al Razan, he said in explanation, the saying of the scholars, Al Jahmiyu Kafirun, Laysa min Ahl al Qibla. The Jahmi is a disbeliever. He is not from the people of the Qibla. He said, meaning, Kafir, he is a disbeliever on account of his combined sayings. All these sayings of the Jahmiya combined together on account of that, he's a disbeliever. Because he has negated Allah, the Majestic and Most High. And there is no doubt that this is the worst of disbelief. And then all the sayings of the Jahmiya that we've heard, when they're all combined together, the result is denial that there is a Creator at all. Total negation of there being a, of Allah the Most High, as the Sheikh said, and this is the worst of disbelief. He said, their sayings of disbelief lead to ta'atil, to total negation. As was said by the Sheikh and the author, and it is denial of the existence of Allah, the Perfect and Most High. And Imam Ahmad, Rahimahullah has refuted them in his book, Al-Rad Al-Jahmiya. And it is printed and verified and all praises for Allah. <coughs> and a number of the people have refuted them. Sheikh al-Islam refuted them in his huge book, Bayan Talbis Al-Jahmiya. He said his saying, Halal al dam la yarithu wa la yurath, that he, the Jahmi, his blood is lawful to be shed. He does not inherit, nor is inheritance taken from him. Shaykh al said, because he is a murtad, he is an apostate, so therefore his, his blood is lawful to be shed. Because that which renders a person's blood secure, is Islam. Whereas the kafir, his blood is lawful. He said, his saying, لِأَنَّهُ قَالَ لَا جُمُعَةَ وَلَا جَمَعَةَ He's saying, because he says, the Jahmi, the follower of Al-Jahmi, the Safwan, he says, that there is no Jumu'ah prayer, and there is no Jumu'ah prayer, no congregational prayer. Sheikh Al-Bazan said, because al jahm he denied the Jumu'ah prayer, and he denied the congregational prayer. All that is sufficient, meaning in his saying, all that is sufficient, in his view, is al ma'rif al billah is that a person has awareness of Allah. So Iman, true faith with him, is just al ma'rifah in the saying of Jahm, 
a person Iman just means that you have awareness of Allah you have awareness of your creator that's it you're, you're a believer a perfect believer in heaven no need for Jumu'ah prayer no need for congregation prayer no need for any deeds after that as long as you're aware that you've got your creator you're aware of Allah that's the end of the, what, what's required with regard to Iman so the Sheikh said so Iman in his view is just al ma'arika awareness so if a person is aware of his Lord in his heart then he becomes a believer mu'min who is perfect in his iman even if he doesn't pray even if he doesn't fast even if he doesn't do anything from the acts of worship at all Shaykh Fawzan said he's saying wala idain wala sadaqah and he said that there is no there are no Eid prayers and no sadaqah no charity He said because he held that deeds are not from Iman. The deeds are not a part of Iman, true faith. Nor is utterance upon the tongue. Nor is belief either. Rather Iman, true faith, in, in his view, is mere ma'arifah, awareness. He's saying, وَقَالُوا مَنْ لَمْ يَقُلِ الْقُرْآنُ مَخْلُوقٌ فَهُوَ كَافِرٌ And they said, whoever does not say that the Qur'an is something created, then he is a disbeliever. Shaykh Fawzan said, the Jahmiya said, whoever doesn't say that the Qur'an is created, and rather says the Qur'an is the speech of Allah, then he is a kafir, a disbeliever. Because he has caused Allah to resemble his creation and tashfih declaring resemblance to the creation is kufr, is disbelief then he said وَاسْتَحَلُّ السَّيْفَ عَلَىٰ أُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَخَالَفُوا مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَهُمْ وَامْتَحَنُوا النَّاسَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَتَكَلَّمْ فِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ وَلَا أَحَدٌ مِنْ أَصْحَابِهِ وأرادوا تأثير المساجد والجوامع. He said, and they permitted the use of the sword against the nation of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. And they contradicted those who came before them. They put the people to trial with something which neither Allah's messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم nor anyone from his companions spoke with. They sought for the emptying and abandonment. They sought for the emptying and abandonment of the mosques and the congregations. Shaykh Bazan said, He's saying, وَاسْتَحَلُّ السَّيْفَ عَلَىٰ أُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ And they held as lawful the use of the sword against the nation of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said, They permitted killing the Muslims those who disagreed with them in aqidah, freedom belief. And therefore when they gained authority in the time of al Ma'mun, what did they do to the Muslims? They killed those of the scholars whom they killed. And they tortured those whom they tortured in order to try and force them to hold the saying that was the position of the Jahmiya. He's saying, وَخَالَفُوا مَنْ كَانَ قَبْلَهُمْ And they contradicted whoever came before them. Shaykh Fawzan said, from the Muslims. Whoever was before them, from the Muslims. They contradicted them. So these sayings did not appear except from them. These sayings of the Jahmiya only appeared amongst them. In this nation, only came from them. He's saying, وَامْتَحَنُوا النَّاسَ بِشَيْءٍ لَمْ يَتَكَلَّمْ فِيهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And they tried and tested the people. They put the people to trial with something which Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم did not speak with. Shaykh Wazan said, they wanted to force the people to accept their saying. As happened in the time of Al-Ma'moon, as the Khalifa Al-Ma'moon. Just after, after year 200. 
as occurred in the time of Al-Ma'mun and those who came after him when they tried to force the people to accept the saying that the Qur'an is created his saying وَأَرَادُوا تَعْطِيرَ الْمُسَاجِدِ وَالْجَوَامِ and they wanted to empty out the mosques and the congregations Sharbala said because their position with regard to Iman, true faith is that it is merely awareness even if a person does not do any action and even if he does not speak with his tongue and even if he does not hold belief in his heart so therefore there would be no need for the mosques and the congregations because the prayer is not obligatory in their view then Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah he continued وَأَوْهَمُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَعَبْتَرُ الْجِهَادِ وَعَمِلُوا فِي الْفُرْقَةِ وَخَالَفُ الْآثَارِ وَتَكَلَّمُوا بِالْمَنْسُوخِ وَاحْتَجُوا بِالْمُتَشَابِهِ فَشَكَّكُ النَّاسَ فِي أَدْيَانِهِمْ وَاخْتَصَمُوا فِي رَبِّهِمْ وَقَالُوا لَيْسَ هُنَاكَ ليس هناك عذاب قبر ولا حوض ولا شفاء والجنة والنار لم يطلقا وأنكروا كثيرا مما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فاستحل من استحل تكفيرهم ودماءهم من هذا الوجه لأنه من رد آية من كتاب الله فقد رد الكتاب كله ومن رد حديثا عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فقد رد الأثر كله وهو كافر بالله العظيم الإمام البربهاري رحمه الله continued and they weakened Islam جهنية and they weakened Islam caused jihad to be left and busied themselves with causing separation they contradicted the narrations and they spoke with that which had been abrogated they utilized unclear texts as proof and they caused the people to have doubts about their religion and they disputed regarding their law and they said there is no punishment in the grave nor any great reservoir al hawd nor any intercession Shafa'ah and that paradise and the fire have not yet been created and they denied much of that which Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said so therefore those who permitted that they be declared disbelievers declared that their blood may be lawfully shed from this aspect since whoever rejects a single ayah from the book of Allah then he has rejected the whole of the book and whoever rejects a single hadith from Allah's Messenger وسلم, then he has rejected all of the narrations and he is a disbeliever in Allah the Sublime al the Sublime one, the Tremendous one Shaykh al Fazan, he said in explanation he's saying وَأَوْهَنُ Islam. And they caused weakness in Islam, meaning the Jahmiyyah. They weakened Islam. He's saying, وَأَقْتَلُوا jihad, And they caused jihad to be left. Shaykh Fazan said, they left off jihad in the cause of Allah. Because they do not hold that disbelievers are to be declared disbelievers because they have awareness of Allah and this means Shaykh said so it means they, they fought no jihad because they said the disbelievers are actually Muslims because they, they are people who have awareness of their creator so as the Shaykh said therefore that's why they neglected jihad altogether because they do not hold that the disbelievers are to be declared as disbelievers 
because they have awareness of Allah and this means that Fir'aun was a Muslim then because he had awareness of Allah in his heart I mean upon the saying of the Jahmiya even Fir'aun would be a believer he would be a Muslim because he had awareness of Allah in his heart and the Shaykh evidence for that he said he the Most High said قَالَ لَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ مَا أَنزَلَ هَاؤُنَاءِ إِلَّا رَبُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرُضِ Surah Al-Isra, the 17th Surah Ayah 102 The explanation and in the context of what Musa alayhi salam said to Fir'aun when he went to call him to the truth that he said to him You indeed know that no one has sent down these signs except the Lord of the heavens and the earth it was Musa alayhi salam he addressed their honor and told him you indeed you certainly know that Allah is the one who sent down these signs which are, which are brought you know that but no one sent them down except the Lord of the heavens and the earth Sheikh Bazan said so he had awareness of Allah in his heart <coughs> and the people of shirk, the mushrikun, in the time of the Prophet wasallam, they had awareness of Allah in their hearts indeed they used to worship him with different types of acts of worship so they believed that Allah the perfect is the Lord and that he deserves worship however they associated others in worship along with him claiming that those others besides him will draw them closer to Allah the perfect and most high even the people of shirk whom the Prophet fought against they had awareness of Allah they believed that he was the Lord and they actually worshipped him it's just that they worshipped others along with him to draw them as they claimed to draw them closer to him he said his saying الآثار, and they contradicted the narrations meaning they contradicted the evidences and the sunnah he's saying and they spoke with the abrogated texts Sheikh Bazan said they took hold of abrogated evidences they took hold of evidences that had been abrogated and they do not act upon the text which abrogates which came later and abrogated they don't take that in order to misguide just as Allah the Majestic and Most High said فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْرٌ فَيَأْتَبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْ Surah Ali Imran the third surah ayah 7 with the explanation so as for those in whose hearts there is deviation then they follow that which is unclear from it Shaykh Fawzan said, and from the Mutashabih, from that which is unclear on its own, is the Mansur. Those texts that have been abrogated. Because it is necessary for the person to be to have awareness of the Nasikh and the Mansur. To have awareness of the text which abrogates, came later and abrogates, and the, te- the earlier text which was abrogated. And also the Al-Mutlaq wa al to have awareness of the unrestricted text and the restricted text and the khas and the arm and the specific the, the text has been specified and the general text he must have awareness of the branches of knowledge for the derivation of evidences he must have awareness of those branches of knowledge necessary to, to derive evidence Drive proof from texts. He needs to know that the person. <coughs> so he does not use as evidence any text, just any text, which he finds without seeing whether it is something abrogated or whether it is something which has been made specific by something or whether it is something which has been restricted by something. Not examining this they didn't examine this on account of deviation and those people the Jahmiya they were not interested in any of this they took it as evidence whatever they wanted to 
access it on account of deviation and in order to misguide the people and they say that we use the Quran as proof but they are not actually using the Quran as proof the Quran is used as proof by those who accept all of it but as for one who takes just a part of it and leaves the other parts then he is a disbeliever in it he the Most High said أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Surah Al-Baqarah, the second surah, ayah 85 with the explanation do you believe in a part of the book and disbelieve in other parts? Shaykh Fawzan said so a person who does not gather between the muhkam and the mutashabih a person who does not gather between those texts which are clear and clarifying texts along with the texts which are unclear combine the two then this one is taking a part of the book and leaving a part if he takes a text which is unclear in the meaning until he takes the other text that will, that will clarify it but he refuses to do so he just takes that first text that's unclear on his own so I said a person who does this he takes that part and refuses to take the part that clarifies it he is, a, he is one who is taking just a part of the book and leaving a part he said and therefore he said وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعُلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلُّمْ to the end of the ayah the same ayah from Surah Ali Imran the third surah ayah 7 with the explanation whereas those firmly grounded in knowledge they say we believe in it all of it all of the book we believe all of it Shaykh Rosan said they say كُلُّمْ meaning all of it meaning the muhkam those texts which are clear and clarified and the mutashabih that which is not immediately clear with regard to its meaning people firmly grounded in knowledge believe in both texts kullum min indi rabbina the explanation all of it is from our Lord they say all of it is from our Lord Shaykh Razan said so therefore they refer the mutashabih those texts which are unclear they refer them to the muhkam to that text which is clear and clarifies it so therefore it explains it and clarifies it however this requires a scholar Adam. it is not permissible for a pretender to knowledge to enter into it or a person who is a deviant intending to misguide so the Mutashabih, the text which is unclear, will not be taken hold of except by one of two kinds of men. Either one who is za'ir, one who is deviant and intends to, to misguide, like the Jahmiyyah. And therefore Imam Ahmad said about them, Yastadil Luna bil Mutashabih min al Quran. Imam Ahmad said about the Jahmiyyah, they use as proof, and they use as evidence, that which is unclear from the Qur'an and that which is initially with, unclear with regard to its meaning from the Qur'an as occurs in, as I mentioned in the footnote is Arrad al-Zanadika wal Jahmiya in Imam Ahmad's refutation of the Zindiqs and the Jahmiya then the second type of person who uses the Mutashabih those ayahs which are not on their own clear with regard to their meaning Shaykh said or otherwise a muta'alim one who feigns knowledge a false pretender to knowledge who doesn't realize and speaks about Allah without knowledge and just before moving on to the continuation then there's a point here from Shaykh al-Sahaymi Shaykh Salih al-Sahaymi he said his saying to kalnamu bil mansukh they spoke with that which has been abrogated he said what he intended was that they deny abrogation in the Jahmiyyah they deny Nasr they deny that there is any abrogation so the Mu'tazila they in the Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila and the Rafida and before them the Jews they denied there being any abrogation 
and they said abrogation does not occur neither in the Quran nor in the Sunnah and the Salaf have refuted them and back to the explanation of Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan he said he's saying وَاحْتَجُّوا بِالْمُتَشَابِهِ and they used unclear texts as proof he said and therefore they refute therefore Imam Ahmad refuted them in his book Ar-Rad al-Jahmiyyah he brought texts he brought the texts which they used as evidence and he refuted their opinion about them and he made clear the correct understanding of them of those texts and he gathered between the ayahs he harmonized between the ayahs and the hadith he said he's saying فَشَكَّكُمْ نَاسَ فِي أَدِيَانِهِمْ so they caused the people to have doubts about their religion Shaykh Fazan said so there is no doubt that this is confusion in thoughts and ideas so it is not permissible to speak about matters of knowledge and especially matters of aqeedah, aqaid creed and beliefs not permissible to speak about that except one who is firmly grounded in knowledge it's not permissible for them to be spoken about by half students or by false claimants to knowledge not to mention by people of deviation and misguidance he said he's saying وَاَحْتَصَمُوا فِي رَبِّهِمْ and they disputed concerning their Lord Shaykh Fazan said they innovated al-jadr argumentation, disputing they innovated newly brought about argumentation, religious debating he said he the Most High said مَا يُجَادِلُ فِي آيَاتِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَلَا يَغْرُرْكَ تَقَلُّبُهُمْ فِي الْبِلَادِ Surah Ghafir, the 40th Surah, Ayah, ayah 4 with explanation no one disputes about the signs of Allah, about the ayat of Allah except for those who disbelieve so do not let their travelling about upon the land deceive you Shaykh Wazan said the believer does not dispute about the ayat of Allah rather he accepts them and he believes he holds as his belief that it is the speech that they are the speech of Allah and that they are good and guidance but as for the person who, who just withholds about them and raises doubts then this is one who disputes about the speech of Allah the mighty and majestic he said he's saying لَيْسَ هُنَاكَ عَذَابُ خَبَرُ and they said there is no punishment of the grave Shaykh Fazan said this fully confirms with their madhab because in their view whoever has awareness of Allah then he is a believer and it is not necessary that, that he, should, he has to pray and fast and perform hajj and perform umrah nor carry out the deeds and based upon this there, is, there will be no punishment in the grave because all of mankind have awareness of Allah and, the, and therefore I mean, but still upon their saying and therefore there is no, there is no sin or, and obedience so those who are in the graves all have awareness of Allah so therefore they will not be punished he said he's saying wala hawda wala shafa'a and they said that there is no hawd no great reservoir nor any shafa'a intercession Shaykh Fazan said all of these said, all of the affairs of the hidden and the unseen the ghayb they denied them because they placed reliance upon their intellects alone he's saying wal jannatu wal naru lam yukhlaqa and they said the paradise and the fire have not yet been created Shaykh Fazan said meaning the Jahmiya said the paradise and the fire have not yet been created despite the fact that Allah has informed that they are already created he the most I said with regard to paradise for iddat lil muttaqeen surah al imran the third surah ayah 133 the paradise the explanation has already been prepared for the muttaqeen the people of taqwa those who are dutiful to Allah 
Shaykh Rasulullah said, or iddat, with the meaning already prepared. This shows that it has already been, its meaning is, said it shows that it has already been prepared and is present. And he said with regard to the fire, or iddat lil kafirin. So, Al Imran, same surah, but ayah 131, with regard to the fire, with the explanation, it has already been prepared for the disbelievers. The Shaykh said, and also, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa informed that the severe heat, the severe heat in summer, is from the breathing out of the hellfire. And this indicates that it is present. And likewise, the fire has two breaths. In the occurs in the authentic hadith, the fire, the hellfire, has two breaths. A breathing, a breathing in, in the winter. And that is the severest cold that you find. And it has a breath in the summer, meaning breathing out in the summertime. And that is the severest heat that you find. So he said, Inna shiddat al harri min fayhi jahannam. Saying what the Messenger of Allah that the severity of heat, meaning in the summer, the severest summer heat, is from the breathing out of the hellfire. In a footnote, they refer this hadith, and they mention the reference for the hadith is being reported by Abu Bukhari in his Sahih, and the reference should be hadith number 533 and 534 from Abu Huraira and Ibn Umar, radiallahu and also reported by Muslim in his Sahih, hadith 615, and also by Muslim from Abu Huraira, or rather that's from Abu Huraira, likewise reported by Muslim as hadith 2209-2209 from Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhu. Then Shaykh Rodan said, He's saying, وَأَنْكَرُوا كَثِيرًا مِمَّا قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ And they denied much of that which was said by Allah's Messenger صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ Shaykh Rodan said, They denied much of that which occurs in the book and the Sunnah because it contradicts their opinion and what they believe. He said, He's saying, فَاسْتَحَلَّ مَنِ اسْتَحَلَّ تَكْفِيرَهُمْ وَدِمَاءَهُمْ مِنْ هَذَا الْوَجْهِ so those who held it lawful to declare them as disbelievers <coughs> declared their blood lawful to shed from this aspect Shaykh Razan said those of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah who declared them to be disbelievers then he declared them to be disbelievers on account of all of these filthy sayings gathered because they result in there not being any religion left. He's saying, لِأَنَّهُ مَنْ رَدَّ آيَةً مِنْ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ فَقَدْ رَدَّ الْكِتَابَ كُلَّهُ He's saying, and because whoever rejects a single ayah from the book of Allah, then he has rejected the whole of the book. Shaykh al said, as has proceeded, that whoever takes as proof part of the Qur'an, but leaves the other parts, so, Regarding some, he attempts to cling on to it. Then he has believed only in a part of the book, and he has left the other part. So a person who uses as as proof that which is unclear, the mutashabih, and he leaves aside the muhkam, that which is clear and clarifying, then he is from those who believe in a part of the book and reject other parts. He's saying, "Waman radda haditha." And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faqad radda al-athara kullahu And whoever rejects a hadith from Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then he has rejected all of the narrations. Shaykh al-Bazan said, likewise the sunnah. It contains that which is muhkam, clear and clarifying. And it contains that which is mutashabih, that which is on its own unclear. So whoever takes that which is unclear from the sunnah and leaves off the muhkam, that which is clear and clarified, then he's rejected all of the sunnahs. And he said as the final paragraph, he's saying, وَهُوَ كَافِرٌ بِاللَّهِ الْعَظِيمِ And he is a disbeliever in Allah the Sublime. Shaykh Bajan said, this is the result and Allah's refuge is sought. He said, because the one who truly believes in Allah, he says, آمَنَّا بِهِ كُلٌّ مِّنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا Surah Al-Imran, third surah, ayah 7 The true believer, he says we have iman in all of it 
we believe in it all of it is from our Lord and the Sheikh said as for the person of deviation then he takes that which is mutashabik that which is unclear because it is more fitting for his purpose and as for the muhkam that which is clear clarifies then it does not suit his purpose so he leaves it this is the way of the people of the desires where the deviated sects always and it is not specific to the Jahmiyyah however its origin was from the Jahmiyyah however all the people of the de deviated sects all of them in every time this is their way they take hold of the proofs only that which will they take hold of the, those proofs only the ones that will conform to their own desires and they leave whatever conflicts with their desires that's where Sheikh Fawzan ends explanation of this point and before finishing just to mention as quickly and as quickly as possible a point that's brought by some of the explainers they mentioned Ibn Qayyim with regard to the takfir of the, of the Jamiyyah declaration of the Jamiyyah being disbelievers but Imam Ibn Qayyim said in his book and in his famous poem an Nuniyah that the Jahmiyyah were declared to be disbelievers by 500 scholars 500 scholars and uh, finally uh, finish, round off and finish then Sheikh Salah al-Suhaymi Hafizullah he said on this point with regard to this, uh, this point that the, dis the Jahmiyyah is a disbeliever Sheikh Suhaymi said this saying where the author mentioned it the saying that the author mentioned at great length then in summary it is that he passed the judgment that the Jahmiyyah are disbelievers and there is no doubt that the there is no doubt in the disbelief of the first Jahmiyyah those, who once, those ones who founded it the initial Jahmiyyah but as for the second the later Jahmiyyah who have developed into the saying of the Mu'tazila then those people no one from the Salaf declared them to be disbelievers. I mean, the initial Jahmiyyah, the ones described here in these texts, no, there's no doubt about their disbelief. But as for what they're saying developed into later, into the saying of the Mu'tazila, it is al, then no one from the Salaf declared them to be disbelievers. He said, so the speech of the author is not to be taken unrestrictedly. And then he intended here that the saying itself is disbelief or the affair itself is disbelief but as for one who is upon it a particular individual then he is to be examined have the conditions the conditions for declaring him to be a kafir been fulfilled and have any preventing factors been removed or not so if the conditions for him to be declared a disbeliever are present and any preventing factor is absent then the judgment will be passed upon anyone who denies anything that the author has already mentioned here or who rejects anything from the texts he will be judged to be a disbeliever if the proof is established upon him the conditions for declaring him so are present and preventing factors are absent and then he goes on that so he mentions the issue with regard to an individual as well that detail is necessary Allah <laughs>